Hi, this is Jason, and I'm just going to make a quick recording of putting together a few figures using iTree Landscape for my ISA presentation that I'll go ahead and throw up on our YouTube channel just to show how that process worked for me and how quickly and easily you can use iTree Landscape to uh, access a lot of useful data and create some uh, useful maps. Uh, so here I am on the iTree Tools landing page, www.itreetools.org. Uh, and I've got a timer up here, and I'll go ahead and start that once I get to uh, actually using Landscape, just so we can see how long this process does take me. So we'll go to the iTree Tools drop down here and select Landscape. And now that we're on the Landscape landing page, I'll go ahead and start the timer. And then I'll hit Get Started here. And for this example, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, use the city of Alexandria across the river from our uh, conference site here. And so now we've sort of zoomed into Alexandria and there's a few things I want to turn on here so that uh, it sort of helps me select some of these things. So for the base maps we can use these uh, street maps but I usually like the way uh, that the aerial imagery looks so I'm going to go ahead and switch that base map and I'm going to go ahead and turn on our boundary layers uh, since I'm going to try and select the city of Alexandria, I'm going to turn on these U.S. Census Places boundaries. So those are essentially our uh, cities. And down here I have my selection tools, and rather than block groups, I'm going to go with those places and put my select tool and click somewhere here in Alexandria, and you can see it should uh, be highlighted there. But in order to do some analysis here, I'm actually going to want to... Uh, look at a smaller geometry within there. So I'm going to go ahead and swap out my census places for census block groups, which are really the smallest geography we can use in landscape. So I clicked on my swap tool here. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Alexandria there. And let me slide my clock out of the way here. And if I scroll down here, so I'm going to want to swap that city, zoomed out a little bit on it. For the census block groups that cover the city. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click on census block groups. And you can see it selects everything within the city and everything along the boundary too. So uh, that's okay for now. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and hit okay. And from here, uh, you can see we've got some stuff that's sort of outside the city, out in the river. So I'm going to get rid of some of those things. So I'm going to switch this to Census Block Group and go back to my Select tool, which will now uh, act as a Deselect tool. And I'm also going to change my visibility of my selection here. I'm just going to make it a little transparent because now I can see where those actual city boundaries are. And now I'm just going to go ahead and click around using my select tool to get rid of any block groups that happen to be outside the city. Maybe I'll make that just a tad darker. Let's see if we can get a little more space to see the whole city at once here. And if I go a little talk too far, you can see that boundary there. Let me go ahead and make this a little more transparent. Yeah, it looks like we still got one or two in here. And I think looking around the boundary now, it looks like probably everything within the city. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on process. 
and it may take a few minutes to process here depending on how many census block groups or how many geographies you have see I have uh, 108 I've done uh, you know over a thousand and, and that can take a few minutes but when you're down in the hundreds it rel goes relatively quickly depending on your computer and your internet speed uh, so once our base map pops up here we can go ahead and start to look at some other things I think I'll turn off um, my boundary layers those census places for now so since we can see that we've got the whole city selected and I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just create uh, as an initial map just a map of the canopy cover um, in the city there So I'll resize that a little bit and we can go down here and take a look at our canopy cover and it looks like it's saying we've got 37 percent citywide we could also look at um, just our high-res imagery here so let's go ahead and we'll just if I click on this percentage here it'll give me a map of that percent canopy cover and we've got a little legend down here uh, you can see our highest level in there is going to be 81 percent canopy cover and our lowest is down to 10 percent so we've got a pretty good variety I'm going to make that just a little bit less transparent and let's go ahead and just grab that as one of the maps we're going to use uh, in the presentation. So this is just a map of percent canopy cover and I'm just going to use my snipping tool and grab a quick picture of that and paste it into a new PowerPoint slide. I think from there, there are lots of other things we can look at um, within iTree Landscape. We could look at the tree benefits, which is going to give us uh, benefits and mounts and values. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and jump over to uh, prioritize tree planting. And right away, it's going to jump in with a default prioritization map here and one of the things I almost always do is I like this color ramp down here a little better than that default one so I'm going to change my color ramp and I'm going to go ahead and minimize that for a second and we can see what it's prioritizing by here we're doing a 30 percent priority based on low tree stocking level, 30% priority based on tree cover per capita, and 40% based on our high population density. Uh, so that's going to be a map of kind of where there's uh, lots of people, low tree canopy cover per person, and uh, some available space to plant trees. So uh, I think that looks like a good, we'll just grab that default map. And so I'll just take another snip and paste it in another new slide for making a presentation here. <clears throat> and from there, just to show what else can be done with these priority planting maps, there are lots of other things under here that we could prioritize by. I think I'm going to kind of cut this down to just two categories. And let's go with instead of high population density, uh, you can see sort of the different variety of number of choices you have in here but I think I'm going to select uh, perhaps high population below the poverty line and then I'm going to select um, let's go with low tree cover per capita so where we have low tree cover per person and we have a higher proportion of folks uh, living below the poverty line and I'm going to go ahead and equalize those so this has to sum up to a hundred percent to make our index so it's going to put 50 percent weight on that low tree cover per person and 50 percent on the uh, number of people below the poverty line so uh, we also have to update our map display here and now we have a wholly different map since we're prioritizing based on different features so i'm going to go ahead and grab this one too for the presentation And we can go 
ahead and paste that into one new slide. And these slides are really just quick examples of stuff you can get to real easily with uh, iTree Landscape. I'll put up a few more examples during the presentation, but in less than 10 minutes we were able to make uh, three maps showing everything ranging from just how much tree canopy cover we have in different areas of the city to where we might want to plant more depending on what our goals are. Uh, so that's how iTree Landscape works and that's a quick example and I'll uh, finish up this recording and get it up on the website.